So when it comes to methodologies, uh, methodologies, sorry, of, uh, of of actually testing and scaling Facebook ads, what like you don't don't give me your your strategies, right? But, but but just talk about your sort of philosophy for for doing that. Are you a very systematic person? Like I know you're an interesting kind of person because you've got this creative side, right? Uh, where you're thinking very creatively about the brand, but you're also very data. You know that's a really yeah. good good way to be essentially. Exactly. So what what is what, talk about your methodology overall for both so with, for testing and scaling Facebook ads? Right, right. It's a great question. Uh, great question. Now the thing is, it's not a, it's not essentially contradicting it's a, each other. It's actually empowering each other. Now my mythology with Facebook is that there's two routes to take. Facebook ads can be a traffic source of how you basically build a brand and push it forward into building something that is not essentially only reliant on Facebook ads. But then there's another side of Facebook ads where you're building a store or a pop-up shop or just like an offer and then running uh, Facebook ads and traffic to that offer. And you can only rely on Facebook ads, which is completely fine. We still do that today, right? Those two mythologies are if we're going on the churn and burn or like the fast uh, make money type thing, it's essentially um, I can't go as deep because that would be like three hours. But in a nutshell, and most people that actually have experienced Facebook ads will understand this, is I test a lot of different angles with an auto bid campaign essentially, right? I run $10, $20 a day ads on different angles and targeting. Let's say I have a specific product and I want to run traffic to it. Let's just take, for example, a dog product, right? So I'll be targeting dog interests, right? But uh, it depends how much money I want to put in and invest into actually testing it. I can be testing five different audiences and putting like an auto bid, $20 on each one of those audiences. That will essentially result in $100 a day because 20 times five is 100. Or I can invest less and only put one ad and combine all the audiences. Now I'll usually scale any ad that is auto bid that is giving me a profitable return on investment after two, three days. Uh, and by profitable return on investment, of course, I mean that I'm making more after expenses of advertising and after cost of goods. So if I'm sending a $20 a dog leash or whatever, and I'm, I'm, I need $10 to even buy the product, and I'm paying $5 on, on, to get a purchase through ads, I'm not left with $5 profit. So if I'm left with profit after two, three days, I usually scale it. Now, there's a million different ways to scale. So don't take this as ab absolute what I'm about to say because there's a lot of different ways to do the same thing and they're not, there's not like some of them are bad, some of them are good, they're different routes. How I do it is I just run very big uh, ad set budgets where like $1,000, $2,000 a day with a manual bid. And a manual bid for me is less, I, I don't treat it as a manual bid, I actually call it budget control because I can put $1,000, $2,000 but if the bid is correctly, I will only spend a specific percentage of that manual bid uh, budget depending on the bid that I'm actually putting on it. So if I'm putting a $2,000 budget, but I'm bidding on like $20 cost per purchase, then the ads maybe one day will only spend $300 out of that $2,000 and on another day will spend $800. Maybe another day won't spend anything at all. But it's more controlled and it's more sustainable. And on top of that, that's the way uh, I basically push numbers like higher. I test on the, uh, the um, audience level a lot. And whatever works, I'll duplicate that, completely the same targeting, and I will target a manual, I will do the same thing but with manual bid. Of course, there's a lot of different testing structures. Sometimes I'll, today I even went to 10 different um, audience segments, which includes USA, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, UK, first world country Europe, um, third world country Europe, Asia, top tier Asia, low tier Asia, literally 10 different segments, South Africa, and then I test those 10 different segments and then suddenly, because people, this is another thing that this is like a golden nugget that, uh, about Facebook ads that people don't understand. They go straight to USA and Canada. And you'll be surprised that from the past year, the, the audience, the, the countries that worked for us the most, n like 90, maybe 80% of the time, were actually not USA and Canada. Sometimes it would be South America, sometimes it would be Asia, sometimes it would be Australia. And I'll tell you exactly why as well. In the US, let's say for example, we have a 5% conversion rate, okay? Um, but we're paying about $30, $30 CPM, which we're paying $30 to actually show our ad to 1,000 people. Okay. But we have a 5% conversion rate. But let's say we're targeting Mexico. Okay, and our conversion rate is only 2%, lower than the US, but we're paying $3 to show our ad to 1,000 people, which essentially means we're paying a tenth of the price that we're paying for the US to show our ads, but our conversion rates are only half. Yep. So essentially, Mexico will bring us much more money because we're paying much less, but the conversion rate together with how much we're paying to show our ads to the audience eventually adds up to bring us more revenue. So don't only focus on for first world. We actually even, our testing isn't, Sometimes we don't even start with USA, Canada. We'll go in and target like third world if our product is cheap. And then you'll notice all of these different changes. But don't be strict on USA, Canada, Australia in the top five. A quick tip as well, and I'll, I'll close this question, is go and search the top 25 GDP countries in Google. And those should be your, your countries that you want to target. Mm -hmm. Those include a lot of European countries that are, because at the end of the day, USA is as rich as the Netherlands, but the Netherlands is much cheaper traffic. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's funny just using GDP as a metric because I know right. a lot, you try to eyeball it a lot. People will try to be like, oh, that country, that country, that country, but yeah, you, yeah. you miss ones that you, you know, exactly, don't yeah. give Latvia enough respect, you know? Right, it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> dude, who says Latvia doesn't have a few people that want to buy dog collars? Yeah, you know? and exactly. the, the e-commerce trend is growing globally, so it's those emerging markets are going to be massive opportunities yeah, for yeah. people. Exactly. Very cool. So yeah, you've given a lot of like sort of inside insight into, into scaling, testing, things like that. But talk a little bit more, you know, about the other aspect that, that we've talked a lot about, which is the the creative funnel. So so basically, starting with how your brand, uh, starting with your brand, then how your brand appears to customers usually through social media, Facebook ads, through to the landing page. Like what? what